It's a story as old as time, or at least as old as Palmer pistols have been around. See, every time a Palmer pistol gets released, it claims the title Glock Killer. Today, we visit the Springfield Echelon and see if this pistol can dethrone the Glock. Jake, how's it going, man? I've never been better. Never been better, really? I don't think so, in my entire life, never been better. Why is that? I don't know, I'm willing it to be, um, you know, I believe if I put positive things into the universe, positive things will come back to me. This is like a, like unnatural amount of happiness and joy we're experiencing from jo from Jake. I'm a joyful Jacob, person. And I hope it's translating through the camera right now. Mm -hmm. Is It's not because you missed me for last week? I guess we haven't seen each other in like six weeks, so. Yeah. Because I had a thing. Yeah. So you miss me and now you're happy that we're together again? I mean, I'm stoked, man. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jake, I got some important questions for you. Okay, Because today we're talking about your favorite kind of pistol. Yes. A polymer pistol. Right. What would it take for you to get into a polymer pistol again? <laughs> okay. My immediate answer, bankruptcy and I have no choice. <laughs> 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 like, like my infinity. Like I lost everything, and I have to start over with no money. That's what the answer. Outside of that, if you were I, here's a better question. Yeah. If you were in the market for a Palmer pistol, say just because you had the scratch that you need to itch. Okay. Wait. The itch, itch you, you need, need to scratch. scratch. Yeah, I'm tracking. Sorry. Um, just just to get a Palmer gun again. What what are the boxes that you need to check? For a polymer pistol i don't want to have to go take a polymer pistol and spend twenty five hundred dollars on it to make it interesting like because at that point i'll go get a staccato so i need it to be at a polymer pistol price point call it sub thousand bucks okay. that actually gives me the features that i would otherwise have to go pay to upgrade what are some of those features that you're looking for uh just name four or five grip texture okay. um some degree of potentially ambidextrous controls um definitely optic cut and a decent trigger. Okay. I don't know. Cool. Okay, build your old right target. Okay. Stand by. Beep. Damn, Jake. You know why I shot that so good? No, not really. It's because of the belt. Oh, duh. You know where the belt's from, Jake? I do. Where is it from? So Garrett, it's the same shit that are on these hips right now. But I'm wearing the battle wagon, which is for your battles. And yes. you're wearing the what? Light inner Velcro. Set up for EDC right now, offset on the loop. That's how I roll. Very nice. Yep. What's our code? It's 1911. Two rounds on steel, hit that shit. Yep. 50%, Miss those two. 50% hit rate. Two. We'll, 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 we don't blame the belt on that. The code's 1911 syndicate, saves you 10% off. Um, They've been with us for a while, man. I think they've been sponsoring us for, I don't know, better part of 2023. Good dudes, and a lot of you dudes have bought their belts, so that's awesome. Back on, on with the, the freaking show. All right, Jake. Yes. Welcome to Las Vegas. Thank you. What are we doing out here today? Gambling. Gambling with Springfield. <laughs> like a bunch of degenerates. Yes, yes. <laughs> well, we're gonna do first impressions on this. Something new that we're doing on some of the gun reviews, mm -hmm. right? Either whether you're reviewing the gun and I give my first impression or we flip-flop that. Yep. And today we're doing that with the Springfield Echelon as we've already talked about. I have so. never shot one. Nope. So, this is yours, buddy. Okay. Step up. Let's see. There's a mag for you. Yeah. And uh, I'm just gonna call some drills. So first reaction without actually firing the thing. This is the large grip module, yes? Yeah. Okay. So one thing I don't get is when people really obsess about it fits my hands. I'm like, I don't know. I don't have large hands and that's a large grip module and that feels fine. Would you say maybe the definition of that is when people are adjusting length of pull on a rifle, you need to be able to actuate length all the controls? Length of pull is a different animal. Let me finish what I was gonna say. Yeah. Can you actuate all the controls with your primary hand, whether it's slide release, mag release, etc.? Slide release there. So uh, first, first thing I didn't know, full and beat. Yeah. Hey, didn't oh, know that. There you go. Um, so yeah, I can hit thumb, or I usually drop shit with my trigger finger, and I can hit the ambi side, and that right there would be a problem. 
So if this wasn't ambi, right? Yeah. And I had to do my normal move for a lefty, which is, you know, mag goes out, mag goes in, and you've got to drop this, I'd have to completely break my mm -hmm. grip. That said, I don't think a different size frame is going to fix that. You got I think it. that's simply the position of where the damn thing is. Yep. Now, but, again, that's the large frame. But, but I've got the ambi side, so I'm fine. Yeah, you got the ambi side. Um, some people I've talked to that have smaller hands really love the slide release. I was going to say, but I'm not loving the slide release. Okay. It feels very minimal, like very minimal. Like yeah. I have no leverage over that thing. Okay. But I haven't shot it, but as a dry experience, you go, man, that is a tiny, tiny nail edge. Yep. Yeah. Well, Small see. but mighty. But the grip texture is solid. Okay. Which is funny because you would typically have to pay to get texture on a baseline polymer gun. Um, and here you don't. What about like, how's the slide look to you? How's fit and finish feel? So I would definitely say as just an overall, the action itself, a lot smoother than a Glock. Okay. Um, I'd say that's just an overall more, you know, it's not a 2011 obviously, but it's like that is a pretty smooth, you know, slide in relation to the frame. I do think it's a good looking gun. Aesthetically, it's a very good looking gun. I think it's a handsome firearm. With your, your slide cuts, even with the light and optic being more round, I think the hard angles plus the round angles, I think it looks good, man. Yeah, so I'll have to get used to a grip angle that's different. So like, you know, it's not a 1911 grip angle, so I'm yeah. going, oh, there it is. You got to dip like a Glock, kind of? Yeah, okay. it's closer to a Glock, Glock grip angle for me than obviously a 1911, but I guess that's to be expected. Cool. Uh, we'll do uh, two to the chest, one to the head on the paper, and then one round on steel. There's a line break, but that's okay. Yeah, we'll take it. Do two to the body, one to the head, two to the body, one to the head, transition to steel. How do you feel like recoil is thus far? Like how's, how's it retaining uh, zero? It shoots, it shoots like a polymer pistol. Okay. You know, that, that, that's my honest reaction. It doesn't shoot like a staccato. It doesn't shoot like a Nighthawk. It is not those things. Yeah. So I don't think it's fair to judge it against that overall. What would you say it shoots like a Glock 17? Yeah, I'd say it's fair. Okay, so. Okay. Oh, I didn't do that. That's the first time I've seen that. So let's see if we can recreate that. Uh, Jim, that, let's go to a. A little one R one. See if we get a birthday bump. I think what happened is the knuckle of your trigger finger was resting on top of that ledge. Let's see here. So. No? Huh? No contact. Yeah. Getting birthday bump. Yeah. So maybe the slide release is a non-issue. <laughs> it's a non-feature. <laughs> and it's there for if you got smaller hands. It just doesn't matter. It shoots like a Glock 17. Okay. Yeah, I, I mean, that's totally fair. We're gonna do that cross drill. So one to the chest, one to the head, one to the chest, one to the head, one round on steel. Okay. Getting used to a polymer trigger or, you know, striker fire trigger again. It takes a sec. So that was gonna be my next question. Think of last time you shot a Glock. It's, it's, it's been, been a minute. Okay. It's the Why Glocks video, and I was forced into making making that. It's definitely better than a Glock trigger uh, by by a significant margin. Yeah. Like I pretty, I don't even think it's really debatable. Can you put it into words of why it's better? So there, there's so once you hit the so you have that little bit of take up, you hit that you get to the wall. It's a quicker than a Glock. There's a lot less just mush and bullshit in the way of, of that take up. But once you're on that wall, it's pretty fucking clean once you hit the wall. Once you hit the wall, it's pretty abrupt and then a little more pressure and a break, yeah? Yeah, it's definitely a smooth resets, solid. I mean, you know, look, this is just a first impression. Obviously we'll talk in depth through the gun, mm -hmm. but what's a, what's price on them what are they going for um street price is 5.99 you can pick them up for like you know five i i got this you know a little bit of a deal from a local shop uh picked it up right around 480 so i mean look street it's, price it's five, a, it's a limited first impression obviously that's the point of it but you go the the ledge you know the thumb ledge is is actually 
quite effective. Um, it's yes, pedal. hard to find a whole lot to pick apart as a first impression. That'd be cool. my thought. It's struggling to find a much to criticize after 30 rounds. But as a 1911-2011 guy, going to a Palmer gun, this kind of checks all the boxes? I'd Look, after 30 rounds, which is a limited set of experience, I'd say, all right, give me that over a Glock. Okay. <laughs> okay. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Right Time on. the video. You gonna leave these out here? <laughs> no. These aren't yours? <laughs> no. Okay. Well, guys, if you're looking for any ways to support the syndicate, <laughs> like hopefully someone supported this lady that left her drawers in the desert, you can go to 1911syndicate.com. Um, we're a real estate business. Oh, what are you scared you about? You son of a bitch. It's a beautiful woman's. Dude, that's probably tied to a murder. It's what a are you beautiful doing? woman's panties. Listen, listen, guys. Take them home, give them to your wife. Stop it. You don't talk about my wife that way. <laughs> you want to support the syndicate. We are a real estate company. We have affiliates all over the country and actually international, right? Paris, technically, yeah. Yep. Also, the real estate market sucks right now, so we definitely appreciate the support on that. Uh, 1911syndicate.com. Beyond that, Patreon, that's more of a system where you just give us money, um, and we're totally fine with that. You get some behind-the-scenes stuff, early access to product drops, all that kind of stuff. We got that linked below. So we're going to go ahead and grab those panties, get back to the video. So we're back from your first impressions. Yeah. Tell me what was your impression. Um, you know, it... it <laughs> I was struggling to find much to dislike at that price point. I think my immediate thing, if I was trying to find criticism, because I'm a critical person, so I see the world through the lens of critical, um, probably about my only critical thing I could really pinpoint um, would be the slide release. I don't like the location of it. Okay. And I have to admit, I, I probably wish it was a little bit beefier. The con or the counter argument to it is I think if the slide release was beefier, people would probably start overriding it. So maybe that's why they made it minimal. Okay. So that people, cause you're getting slide lock and yes. you don't typically get slide lock on a Glock. Correct. So I think, you know, that's the counter argument is like, hey, well, it seems like everyone's getting slide lock. That's a good thing. Yeah. Yeah, like where it sits on a Glock, like the meaty portion of my thumb just yeah. sits right there. So. Right, mm -hmm. right. Um, <clears throat> so would you say you're kind of grasping at straws a little bit? I can't find much to pick apart at that price point because it has at that, which let's talk about that here for a little bit. So backstory to this, uh, when we decided to do an echelon video, I was not excited, Jake. Yeah. Not excited in any way, shape or form. And in fact, when I went to go buy this gun, the is a local shop that I go to, they've helped us out on the channel multiple times. Mm -hmm. um, they're like, seriously, you're doing that? We would have never thought you guys would do that video. Yeah, well. And I'm like, yeah, well, me neither. And I kept telling them like, Guys, I, I'm fully expecting to come back here in a couple days and tell you, like, I absolutely hate the thing. Mm -hmm. We got to do this review, spend the money, because I purchased everything on this gun with my own money. Right on. Light, gun, big frame, which we'll get into, optic, because we have two frames. Yeah, and to be perfectly honest, we kind of did that on purpose on this, because we were like, look, that way we're not... Not beholden, but it's like there, there's no attachment back to the manufacturer on something you think you might be critical about. It's like, I don't know. It, it frees us up to be a little, like, more critical if we really wanted to be. Yep. Yeah. And I picked this up for sub $600. They're going right around 600 a little bit more. Yeah, right on. Okay. So I think I think I got those numbers mixed up earlier, but that's okay. We'll correct yeah. that. Yeah, we're tracking. So. Yep. <clears throat> All right, Jake. So some of the... YouTubers out there that have reviewed this have gone as far to say it feels like a custom pistol. I have a pretty hard time with that because there's a custom pistol. Actual custom pistol. By Infinity. By coincidence, this wasn't planned. Like no, just no. happens to be just a custom happens pistol. to be out here. Um, this is not that. No. Okay. Um, <clears throat> could you argue that it feels like a gun that you bought stock, you sent off, had a bunch of custom work, and sent back? Yeah, upgraded. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. The difference though is. Out of the box, this comes with really good textured stippling. Yeah, it Would does. you agree? I, 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 yes, absolutely. What about for like concealed carry? Do you think that's too aggressive or do you think it's all right? No, I think it'd be fine. Okay. It, it might need to get, no, I think it'd be fine, yeah. Same, I think it'd be fine. You have out of the box, the optic mounting system. Yes. Okay, which let's talk about that for a little bit. So it does come with iron sights, tritium. 
Um, Which this, again, at that price point, I mean, that's a big value right there. I'd say, you know, you know, you throw on aftermarket, even the Glock night sights on a Glock that are metal, yeah. those are $89. Right, right. So yeah. out of the box again. So if you want to soak up, you know, 90 bucks, there's sure. 90 bucks, right? Yeah. Um, we have the optic system, which is fairly unique. And let's get into that a little bit. It was so. probably when they announced the gun, it was probably the thing I was the most intrigued by that I thought that seems like a smart thing that you guys just did on that. Yep, yeah. The optic mounting system is the VIS, V-I-S, or variable interface system. Okay. It works with 30 different optics currently on the market. Okay. okay. So again, huge value. I'm not buying a pistol that can only run one footprint, yeah. right? This runs 30 on the market. And what it has is little um, like index set screws in there that you just swap out for the different optic. Okay, so so it's not a plate system. No. Ah, man, big brownie points on that. Big brownie points. I mean, a plate is just <clears throat> another potential failure point. You know, it's, it's it's a thing that is not native to the gun, going on the gun, so that another thing called the optic can go on the gun. Yep, there's these two little pins up front that you swap out depending on what optic you have. It's labeled, they all come in the box. And then you got your standard little set screws for any optic. Very clever. Right? Very clever. Very, very good. Um, we have interchangeable back straps, so you can go like on this. This is the stock frame right here, guys. I, later on, purchased the large frame. Both will ship with a small, medium, large back strap. Okay. Okay. And I imagine the large on the standard frame is like the medium on the large frame. Okay. Okay. I then remove that and put on the large panel, grip panel on the large frame. Okay. And all they really did is, it's it's the same frame as yours, they just added like a polymer spacer in there mm -hmm. to make it bigger. Yeah, okay. okay you see that? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah, it's just a little thicker. Yep, a little mm -hmm. bit thicker. She's a thick one. A um, Couple other features. You got your lightning cuts, which aesthetically look good. And, and uh, they're, they are nice and grippy. They are, they actually serve a purpose. Yeah. Right, it's it. not just for aesthetics. Like yeah. they do have some good sharp edges, not too sharp to where it'd be a problem but angled enough to where you can conceal carry it, you can rack it however you want, and it's not uncomfortable, but you can still grip it, right? So, getting into the frame a little bit more too, you have your gas pedals built in. Which are nice. They're not fat and obnoxious, and there's not like a hard, like 90 degree angle. They're yeah. beveled, Yeah. okay? We have a double undercut with rounded edges. And that's good. Now, granted, look, if you're making the frame anyway, you're like, well, what's the difference? You just put all the features on. We got to make the damn grip module anyway. But you go, I mean, again, I got a double undercut with texture on the damn thing. With texture, man. I mean, come on, guys. Again, when you start adding these things up, you're getting a lot of bang for your buck. No doubt. I wanted to hate this pistol, but even just on the features that come, like from the factory, it's hard. You'd be really like pushing to hate it yeah. just off of features, not shooting experience, right? <clears throat> or shootability. Sure. Next, we got ambidextrous controls on both sides. Something that, as soon as you picked it up, you noticed, because yeah. you're a lefty, right? Yep. Um, we got your ambidextrous mag release and slide release. Now, talking to people with smaller hands that have shot this gun, they love where that slide release is. Okay. Because if you think about it, like, you get a little bit smaller thumbs, you know, not a lot of room to reach or grab or kind of break your grip. Yeah. Um, a good friend of mine, he's got really small hands, he's a smaller dude. He loves this because on most guns, he has to really break his grip to bring his thumb forward mm. to hit the slide release. Okay. For him, his little short thumbs hit both the mag release and slide release. No issues. Little short thumbs. Poor hey, guy. Yeah, yeah. He's, a, he's a nice guy though. I just <clears throat> feel bad for your description of his thumbs. Yeah, well, he sees them every day, so he's he knows. He knows. Right? And then one of the big things that we're seeing nowadays, this is not the first company to do this, but this does have, go ahead and take that for me a removable fire control unit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So much like the uh, P320s, sure. we're starting to see some people maybe push the envelope with that idea. Yeah. Which SIG is the first to do it. Both you and I don't like those. I don't like. I don't, I, I like the design concept. Yes. I don't like the execution of the 320. Um, like the Zev OZ9 uses the same thing. Yep. Where it's like, and I like that better. Um, you know, yeah. it's, it's probably my favorite version of a FCU style design that I've seen. Okay. Off the top of my head without yeah. thinking through everything. Yeah, I'd have to really go back. Yeah. I forgot that the OZ9 even had that. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so again, not the first to do it, but they have the COG, Central Operating Group, right? <clears throat> Weird name, but okay. Well, um, it's probably due to a uh, video game reference. Ah. So, Gears of War, 
the cog is a big thing in Gears of War. Right. That's immediately what I thought. Anyone that plays video games, I promise you. Yeah, that. chime in in the comments so, if you yep. know about the cog. Yeah. So that was really intriguing because when I first bought the gun, I don't think that the large frame had been announced. Okay. Okay. Or I just didn't know. I, I started asking around, got on the website, and then saw that the large frame was available. Right on. I had that purchased and shipped to my door for a hundred bucks. The frame. Yep. Yeah. That's shipping and frame included. Okay. So frame was like sixty-five. Shipping was you know right around that extra cash. So sure. Thirty-five bucks. So now the great thing is is because it has that removable FCU, dude. You can swap. I swapped this frame out with just googling a YouTube video in three minutes, man. Okay. It is stupid simple. You rotate a pin, it pops out, you're good to go. Yeah, So right on. I am excited for the future as we've seen with 320s and how other companies have taken off with their frames. I'm really excited to see what comes out for that. Yeah. I don't think really there's anything necessary or anything different, but say there's a metal frame or like some of those, you know, crazy frames you've seen for SIGs. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see how the market responds to that. You know, it'd be interesting to see is take um, someone like Flux Defense with the Raider and go, because that's based on a 320 design, right? <laughs> but it's also inherently flawed because it really doesn't run suppressed. Um, and that's not a Flux problem. That's really as, as best any of us can tell. Um, they that fix that sense. Uh, I don't know. I hear questionable things. Okay. Um, but uh, okay. again, yeah. hey, you could take an FCU <clears throat> design that, hey, maybe this actually could wind up being a good host platform for for them to build something off of. Yeah. No. Uh, that's our idea, Flux guys. So, you know. Yeah. Send me a yeah. s send me a Flux. Whatever you cog, Raider. If you do that, and I'll take one. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, <clears throat> break. You said you had some critical things you wanted to point out. Just like, a couple yeah. little things <clears throat> as I'm just kind of sitting here and playing with it. So I guess the downside to the optics system is you do wind up with probably depending on the optic, but you do wind up with these gaps front and rear of the optic, right? It's like you wind up with those, know. you yep. know, the, those gaps there. Is that really, uh, are you grasping at straws here? Um, you know, this is very nitpicky, Okay. right? But it's like you you do have a almost strange amount of like, sort of just like light and gap between the frame and the slide. <clears throat> You're like, uh, I, I mean, I can see that the top of that bottle on the other end here is orange through the gap in the damn frame and the slide. So you're just like, does it matter? Not necessarily. You could grasp at straws and say, well, yeah, it's going to be more prone to get, you know, fouled up with dirt and shit, but it's like, I don't know. I, th I think you're really kind of stretching at that point. Well, and we, you know, we don't do traditional, like, gun torture tests, right? That's really not our MO. It's just not particularly realistic. Correct. But when that first came out, and there's a couple other YouTubers that were reviewing it, they did legitimate torture tests. A great one is Honest Outlaw. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, he threw dirt on that, put it in a bucket, like, beat the ever-living hell out of it, and it still ran. Yeah. So I don't think that that's an issue, um, which we can revisit later, but no. I was gonna I was gonna wrap that up kind of near the end of the video, but let's just get into it right now <clears throat> because it's a good segue into kind of the backstory and performance of how this has been running. Okay, sure. Okay. So my first range trip, uh, I took 350 to 400 rounds, zeroed it at 15 meters because of who? Uh, Pannon. You got it, our boy Mike Pannon. Um, and within four to five mags, I was like, uh-oh. Yeah. I think I like this. Yeah. And by the end of that range trip, I had zero malfunctions. I had zero issues. It ran flawlessly the whole time. And like I said, three, 350, 400 rounds. Um, I had a couple guys at the range that I know. Um, whenever I go there and shoot, I had them come out and shoot it. They were all a little skeptical after shooting it. They're like, hey, they might be onto something. And uh, so that was the first range trip. After multiple range trips, we're looking at between four and five range trips over the course of, I don't know, a couple weeks. Um, shooting it when I go out for my other job and stuff like that. I'm at about 900 to 1200 rounds okay. before today. Now we're probably at 13, 1400 rounds and I have had one malfunction. I think the footage catches it, um, but legitimately this is the only malfunction I had and it was just a failure to feed. Oh no. See? And I. No, 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 you got a malfunction, dog. Oh, do I? Ah! Uh, oh, is this that? This might be the round nose. What do you mean round nose? There's a round nose round in there, or a flat nose round. Is it? What's all flat nose shit are we shooting? I don't know, there's one, fl it's not. So. Well, that's the first malfunction I've had on this gun. 
God damn it, dude. Why are filming days always like that, huh? One out of 1,200 rounds, I'd probably say that was an ammo thing because I then reinserted that round into a mag, chambered it, and it shot fine. Yeah. I think maybe... Look, if you get one malfunction and call it a thousand rounds, I do not believe that is grounds enough to determine anything. And, and I, I truly don't. think it was ammo related. I, th I, I really think to a large extent, don't take me out of context, but to a large extent when it comes to malfunctions, reliability, you're looking more so for patterns versus one-offs where you're like, I, I don't really know what happened. I can't prove anything. Yes, it's a malfunction, but it could have been mag, ammo, gun. I, I mean, who the hell knows? If I show it, if I see a pattern, cool. Yep. Now we got a problem. Yeah. And then uh, one thing you actually, because I don't reload this way, but one thing you discovered today is what's a feature that it seems like is built into this gun. I got it every time today. I got the birthday bump. Birthday bump. So yeah. that's when slide lock to the rear, drop your mag, insert a new mag with fresh rounds and a yep. little bit of gumption, mm -hmm. and it takes the slide home forward for you. Which for me, um, uh, funny enough, kind of solves what I deemed was probably going to be my one complaint of a slide release I didn't really like. There you go. Yeah. So like HK's notorious for that. Like my P30, it, I get the birthday bump every time, mm -hmm. right? Um, it is a des designed feature. I don't know if that's the case with this. I'm assuming it is, unless we just found if a not, a it's flaw, very consistent. But it's very uh, consistent, I mean, and it's been awesome. Yeah. So I'll take it. Sure. And again, like you said, if you have an issue because you have like bigger thumbs with the slide release, it may, it may be a non-issue, mm -hmm. you know? Um, my thumb sits perfectly on the slide release, so when I insert the mag, my thumb just knocks down the slide release, so. Right. All right, Jake, so after all that, let's get into some final thoughts, wrapping it up a little bit. Yep. Okay. Um, I did some math, and I didn't go to a lot of websites, but I went to some that I know to see how much it would cost to get a Glock to that, mm -hmm. okay? Um, stipple with your double undercut, that stippled also, beveled edges, and your gas pedals. <sighs> Depending on where you're going, you're anywhere from two to $300. With all yeah, of that. Yeah, I would certainly assume. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I got a shop, Juliet Tango, that has done some custom work for me on a 19X. Mm -hmm. That's that's his prices. That's where I pulled it from. Okay. So, okay. Now, let's say we want to send it off to get it optic cut, some lightning cuts, and then uh, it needs to be re -sericoded. We just can't have bare metal. Again, you're looking anywhere between... <sighs> there's some places, Monsoon Tactical, Jaeger Works, a couple different places that I just quickly looked at, you know? You're looking anywhere between 200 and 350 bucks. Okay. Okay. Sure. So let's just, even on the low end, 450 to on the high end, 650 to get a stock Glock that's the same price as that yeah. to that. Yeah. Right? Yeah. This is from the factory at that price with all those features. Yeah. And I'll go out on a limb here, guys. Again, I told you when I first got this gun, I was not excited for this review. As long as this gun continues to run and be reliable, I 100% am going to start carrying that gun training with that gun, and again, as it remains reliable, guys, I would recommend that as something people should buy. Yeah, uh, I mean, as a first impression, I mean, at least for for me, you know, I'm sitting here going, so I, I mean, I think both of us have talked to, you know, multiple gun tubers, and I think a lot of us are kind of in the same boat, which is, you know, the big a, a big challenge that Springfield has is, one, they're very smart at marketing. They release a product, they flood the market with reviews because they send these out in droves to reviewers and, yep. and it creates a skepticism in the marketplace because you go, okay, well, I got 30 gun tubers on day one that are telling me something's awesome. And even though they might be giving you their honest opinion, it does look fishy, right? But it's yeah. like, as we've talked to people behind closed doors and go, so what do you think? It seems like the feedback is pretty commonly I don't know, man. It's pretty solid gun for the money, you know? It's, it's what we're getting. Tough to pick the thing apart too much. Yeah. So. And, and it's also reviewers like, uh, you know, my holster for this is from Roger over at QVO. Yeah. He's yeah. had good things to say about it. I trust yeah. his opinion. He's a good shooter. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and that's the other thing, too, is there's a lot of people already making holsters and accessories for that. So it's just, uh, you know, that QVO holster has been great. So Yeah, no yeah. doubt. No doubt. So if you guys carry a pistol like this for self-defense, you're going to want what, Jake? I have and would recommend you get some insurance, which we use. From Firearms Legal Protection. They have several different packages. They have the individual package for Jake. They have the married traveler package because I travel all over the country with my other job. I'm carrying, as long as I'm legally allowed to carry in that state, I'm covered in that state. Damn and right. And it could be with a rock, that metal pipe, or a firearm. Whatever yep. you need, they cover it as long as it's legally justified. Our code 1911 saves you about a third off each package. And one of the greatest benefits, I think, with this system 
when, if and when you get an issue, when you call, it's an actual attorney lawyer you're talking to, not a customer service rep in some other place of the world. Yeah, no so. doubt. People will romanticize the notion of like um, smoking some dude and everything. It's like, yeah, guys, I, I've never been in that situation, fortunately, mm -hmm. but I can tell you from everyone I've talked to, you definitely do not want that on your hands. But the day that you do, it's going to be an expensive thing to, to deal with. So, yep. you know. Use get, protection, Get yourself guys. covered. Yep. And uh, last thing, guys, I'd love to know your experience with the Springfield Echelon. If you don't have experience with it, what you think of it and what you're looking forward to, and if you're going to buy it. If you do have the Echelon, I'd love to know your round count, if you've had any failures, any malfunctions, anything of that sort. Right if you're interested in the Echelon, I hope this video helps. Again, for what it's worth, as you know, a bearded fat guy on YouTube, I like that gun, and I would recommend people to buy it with their own money. Hell yeah. So let us know what you guys think. See you next time.